Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Pixel Hex 2, which is a tile set uh, that was put out by Zeshio for designing your own hex crawl adventures or hex crawl maps uh, for any kind of fantasy role playing game world. Now, this is the second set um, put out in the Pixel Hex series. I have done the uh, a review of the earlier edition of this previously on this channel. You can check that out if you want. Um, but today we're going to be looking at the new features in the new set, uh, the way that it improves on and expands the whole Pixel Hex aesthetic, um, and some of the cool features that it has. Uh, the background that I have here is a hex kit, which is my program of choice for creating hex maps, although you can use these tiles in uh, other programs if you want, or you can just download the images and, and mess around with them however you like. Uh, so you need to download the files and then you can import them to HexKit. And so down here, uh, I have all of the tiles sorted right here. Uh, as usual, I will put links down in the description below for where you can pick this up for yourself. Um, and also the uh, creator Zeshio sent me 10 keys for downloading free uh, copies of this software. So I'm gonna do a giveaway where uh, 10 people who have subscribed to the Questing Beast newsletter, the Gladizant, are going to get their own free copy of this tile set. So make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter down below if you're not already. Uh, so one of the things you may notice just by looking at um, this tile set is that it's much bigger than the original one. If we go over here to just uh, the normal pixel hex, there's a good, you know, nine, 10 different biomes with some extra icons you put on top of that. But if you go down to pixel hex two, uh, it goes all the way up through 12 and then there's lots of more overlays. So this dramatically expands the amount of uh, biomes and uh, resources that you can use here. And a lot of them have been designed so that they're very modular. So you can take different elements of these uh, hexes and combine them with other ones. So for example, uh, mud holes, what is it called? Muddy plains and sinkholes. Uh, all of these, or almost all of these biomes have transitional hexes. So you can see them right over here where um, they're sort of half done. This allows you to create layers and stack these different um, biomes on top of each other where they can transition into one another. Um, but for example, if you just want a really muddy area, you can either pick these out one at a time, right? You can just slap them down on the map like so. Or my favorite way to do it is you find a stack of tiles that you really like, and then you just click the whole stack and you can drag around and it will automatically fill it in. Now, some of these don't quite line up. So what you can do is you can go into the stack and just select the ones that you want. So these are some kind of transitionary ones there. So shift click, so you just have these ones and now it'll only use those when it's randomly selecting them. So that's pretty cool. Um, one of my favorite sets here is the islands and oceans. I'll show you what I mean here. That's because what you can do is if you just take the main fully completed islands uh, hexes here and just take that big stack and you drag it around, you get a really cool looking uh, archipelago with no work at all. I really love that. Uh, some of these hexes don't quite, you know, don't line up with the other ones in terms of how the water looks. Um, but what you can do for that is just, you know, not select those ones. So you can just select like from here all the way up to the top and then you'll only get those. It does make it more island dense though. Um, but it's great for just creating a random kind of a Studio Ghibli-esque, what does it remind me of? Porco Rosso, like a, the Adriatic, where you have ships that are flying around from island to island. I think it looks really great for that. Now, one thing that people who have uh, played around with Pixel Hex before may notice is that the way that the water looks here for the ocean does not match up with the water from the previous version. Um, most of the uh, hexes and designs from the first version of Pixel Hex are very compatible with this. They line up just perfectly. Um, but some of the aesthetics have been tweaked so they don't quite uh, match. So if you have the water here, you can see that it's a different shade. It's not necessarily a big deal. I guess you can choose one shade or the other, um, but just one thing to keep in mind. Um, if you look back at, here we go, back, go back to the original one. What you also find though, is that you have um, coastal uh, rock transitional periods, transitional sections. So if you have land, you want to transition to the water, you can use these uh, and put them on the coastline and it kind of slopes down to the ocean and makes the transition a little more a little more natural. Uh, one thing I would have liked is I would have liked to see these islands separate from that water underneath 
so they're on a separate layer that way I could add them to other types of water, like the water from uh, the previous version. A really cool thing though, is that there was lots of these icons that you can layer on top of this to add more effects. So you have ships, you have some sea monsters and things like that. So what you can do is just add a layer. Let's call this layer two. And you can just slap some of these things down. There we go. And then you'll just get some cool things. Oop, yeah, there we go. I don't want the same thing twice. Some of the cool things here are there. And you get this incredibly vibrant, uh, flavorful map with very little effort. I absolutely love it. Um, so some of the other things that we have here, let me delete that layer. Remove, there we go. We have the Badlands, which is pretty straightforward. If you just want some cracked ground, it comes in gray and in uh, orange flavors. We have Smooth Mountains. So these come in a couple different you know, backgrounds. We have grass and we have uh, just dirt as well. I like them, they're nice and lumpy. So we go all the way through here, we can see what they look like. I'll just lay them down on the first layer. All right, so they look kind of like that. It's a really nice effect. I definitely like the mountains from the original Pixel Hex better. These definitely aren't as towering and as alpine as the original ones were. They're more low line, which is great because you have more variety that way. The original ones looked more like, um, like this, which looked absolutely fantastic. You can see how they connect up and then they fit right in with the new aesthetic uh, very well. Um, so these two sets really do complement each other. Um, and they do have things that the others don't. So if you want to get the complete experience, you do have to get both of them, I think. Uh, looking down here, what else we got? We have some desert and tropical tiles. This one's good because it has a lot of different desert tiles along with some features, which means that if you select the whole stack, then you're gonna get a pretty realistic desert scene, right? And you immediately have mostly desert, but with plenty of features spread out here and there uh, that you can connect up with roads and things like that. Uh, does this version have roads? Yeah, it does. It does have some bridges, which is great because the original version did not have bridges. Now you specifically have that. And we also have dirt paths and uh, light paths. So there's a lot more variety in terms of the uh, routes connecting things versus what we had in the original one. Um, we have fjords, which I thought was really cool. It's a very specific biome, but it has a unique look to it. Um, so the grass is looks more like this, and it's definitely supposed to connect up to the water. Um, so you can have like a large um, inlet coming in from the ocean, then have these sort of steep fjords on either side of it. Um, there's some rock formations that you can tack on there. And just this one, the fjord summer looks really great. Um, these transitions where it drops off in a cliff, um, as you can see over here on the right, these look really great paired next to the new ocean. Um, but if you just pick the land tiles, you get a really kind of Nordic summer look, which is pretty cool. Um, let me erase what I have here so we can start over. I'm kind of filling up my, my map here. Uh, one thing you do need to keep in mind is that when you create a new file, when you're using uh, pixel hex, you need to make sure that you have flat top hexes. Um, because some programs want to put the point at the top and that can cause some problems because it won't line up with the tiles. Um, what else we got here? We got the same thing, the Fjord in winter. And both of these Fjord versions have overlays. So they have all of these um, Nordic-like buildings, but they're separate from the tiles. So you can use other biomes and then put these buildings on top of it. There's a lot of mixing and matching here, which I really appreciate. This is very Christmassy looking, as you can see. Um, mushroom loam. This one's really cool. If you just want kind of an Alice in Wonderland mushroom world, let's just see what that looks like. If we select the whole stack, there we go. And I do like that there are mushroom overlays so you can get these mushrooms and put them other places. And it's a bit of a bummer that some of these really huge mushrooms, uh, you can't do that with those because that would be really fun to have those growing out of different environments. I'm not sure why it's just the little ones. Maybe it has to do with the way that it overlaps. I'm not really sure. Um, what else we have? We have the transitional tiles, of course. Uh, Southern Grasslands, this one has a unique look. It's more of a step look, I would guess. Sort of a um, Eastern Europe or Russia type aesthetic going on there. Um, and there's plenty of these sort of low-lying uh, forests and shrubs that fit in with that. And overlays, so you can add those onto other biomes. Uh, the Dead Plains, if you need like an area where that a necromancer has corrupted, that works really well for that. Uh, crystalline Winter, this is cool. 
it's a very specific again, you know, I'm not sure if I like those really small ones. So I'm going to go in here and just select the big tiles. There we go. Oop, let's back out a little bit. And then we get the sort of broken crystals on an icy landscape. One thing that I saw um, when I'm comparing the old version to the new version is that the snow definitely looks different as well, uh, as well as the water. So if we go back to, for example, the fjord in winter, and we just get some of their snow tiles. Where do they keep the snow tiles? I think it's in here. Here we go. So tiles like this. Here we go. So these, this is what like the snow tiles look like, which look pretty good. But I actually like the snow tiles from the original version better. Um, they're a little bit bluer and they're a little bit fluffier. For whatever reason, that just like, that gets me more. I just, it, it looks a little bit more, um, a little more cartoony. I think, and it just goes with the aesthetic that I'm into a little bit better. But, you know, you can choose whichever one you want. And because of the way that so many of these things are uh, done in overlays, I can take a lot of the um, buildings that I like and just put them on top of the old snow. No problem. Um, let's check out a few more of these down here. Uh, so we have the mangrove swamp, which is really great. Let's, let's just select that, uh, that whole stack there. There was a little bit of this in the original pixel hex, but this kind of fleshes it out and you really get a lot of density there, uh, as really as much as you want. So there's just so many options here. There's ways that you can combine things. You can leave it as is. It allows you to create very fleshed out worlds very quickly. Um, the main problem that I've seen, this is true in the original version, is doing those transitions. So if you have different biomes and you really want to make them transition naturally, it is a little bit of a pain to go through the entire list of hexes and find the exact ones that line up correctly with one biome and then transition to the other one. You have to place them all by hand. Uh, you can't just like drag around the outline of one biome and have it just do it automatically. That has to be hand selected, which is a little bit of a bother, but it's really not that bad. Uh, we also have some other cool stuff like walls, which the original one did not have. If you wanna have like Great Walls of China situations, uh, cutting your landscape apart. Um, we have new rivers. These ones go on, actually go on the lines. Whereas in the original pixel hex, the uh, rivers went through the hexes. These go along the borders. So that gives you, again, more options for how to do that. Miscellaneous overlays. We have fires. We have geysers. Um, we have a dragon mountain. So this ends up looking a lot like the uh, dragon from The Hobbit, uh, Smaug. There we go. So you can kind of put it like that there we go we have to kind of get it to line up correctly there that's pretty good okay i think i know what i'm doing here and you can get this kind of dragon mountain of course if you have it as an overlay you can put it on top of another environment um what else one of my favorite things is actually the forest i'll show you why in the original version here's what forests look like um so what you would do is you would go down to trees and then you would have here's your different options for forests you can select a few of these and then you would put them down, you know, on top of a grassland or something like that. Um, but they were very sparse and spread out. If you wanted more density, you'd have to create multiple layers of these on top of each other in order to fill in that space. So the new version, I think, fixes that really well by having much denser trees and you can select all of them and you get really interesting patterns. Let me show you. So first what I'm going to do is lay down some grass. So go to the original one. The grass here is preferable. So let's lay down a bunch of this grass. And then what you can do is you can layer the trees on top of it and you get really interesting shaped forests that feel nice and dense. So let's create a second layer. Let's call that layer two. And go down here. We just go to the thick forest. I'm gonna include some of these uh, towers and whatnot too, because those are just cool. Yeah, the whole thing looks good. So on layer two, I'm gonna select the whole stack and just start putting these around randomly, right? So you get these forests, but you have these natural clearings and openings in the forest as you go. You know, that's a little bit too many hands, I think. Let's tone down the hands. Uh, maybe just go from here, or let's go just go from here down to here. That's good. There we go. So the forests look a lot more natural, I think. And if you want it to be a denser, you can just add more, um, 
uh, thicker versions for, of these tiles and just put them in the holes. Um, but I like the look of it a lot better. It feels much more like a uh, landscape that you're a bit further away from, and it just feels a little bit more dense, which I like. Um, and then we have some animals as well. Not that many, but we have farm animals, we have sheep, horses, pigs, and, and so on. So this is a really fun toolkit. Uh, it's really easy to use, especially if you combine it with HexKit. My kids play around with this program all the time because it's almost like just laying stickers down and they create their own fantasy universes. And um, you can create things that look really good and impress your players, especially if you're working online because this looks really good if it's just on a computer because you feel like you're in an old like JRPG or something like that. Um, it's very clear and easy to read with these bright colors and uh, players get really into it. Um, so yeah, that's it for my review. I really like um, all the Pixel Hex sets. I do recommend that you get both of them if you're gonna be running them at all. And as I mentioned before, I will be giving away 10 copies of uh, the Hex Kit, not the Hex Kit, the Pixel Hex tile set um, to random subscribers to the Gladys in my newsletter. So make sure you're subscribed to that. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.